Until now, I've discussed operationalization and measurement levels without asking, are we measuring accurately? Do our measurements reflect the construct we're interested in? In other words, is our instrument valid? The validity of an instrument or manipulation method is commonly referred to as measurement or construct validity. How do we assess construct validity? Well, suppose I've created a questionnaire that aims to measure fondness of cats. A higher score indicates someone is more of a cat person. How do we determine if this score actually reflects the property fondness of cats? Well, we could determine its face validity. Face validity refers to how well the instrument represents the property according to the assessment of experts. An expert opinion can be useful in the development phase, but of course experts can always be wrong. A slightly better alternative is to show the instrument has predictive validity or criterion validity by demonstrating the instrument can predict a relevant property or criterion. Of course, the ability to predict something doesn't mean the scores used for prediction accurately reflect the intended construct. Suppose I create an instrument to measure motivation that can predict job satisfaction. That doesn't mean the instrument measures motivation. It could reflect another construct entirely, say, general positive attitude. So criterion validity can support the claim that we're measuring something consistently, but it has limited value in demonstrating that this is indeed the intended construct. What would be ideal is if we already had a valid instrument for the property of interest. We could then administer both instruments and see whether the scores on the new scale agreed with the already validated scale. Unfortunately, there aren't many gold standard instruments for social and psychological constructs. Another solution would be if we could directly check our measurements. Consider body length. We can use a tape measure and then check if the person whose head sticks out furthest gets the highest measurement result. This purely qualitative way to assess a property is cumbersome, but it allows us to directly check the validity of a tape measure or a bathroom scale. For social and psychological constructs, the situation is very different. We don't have an undisputed direct way to determine whether one person is more intelligent or fonder of cats than another. So is there another way to assess construct validity? Well, we can go about it indirectly by seeing whether the scores relate to similar and different variables in a way that we expect. We refer to this as convergent and discriminant validity. For example, I would expect scores on my cat fondness scale to show agreement or converge with scores on an observational measure of cat fondness, where people spend 10 minutes in a room with a cat and we count the number of times the person looks at or pets the cat. I would expect less agreement between my cat and fondness questionnaire and a questionnaire on fondness of wild animals. It wouldn't be strange to find some association, but I would expect it to be smaller. Finally, I would expect no association with a variable that is supposedly unrelated to cat fondness, like fondness of pizza. A systematic method to assess convergent and discriminant validity is called a multi-trait, multi-method matrix approach. In this approach, we use different instruments, for example, different questionnaires or observation and self-report instruments to measure two traits. Let's take cat fondness and pizza fondness as an example. We would expect a very high association between cat fondness measured observationally and measured through self-report. And the same goes for pizza fondness. We would expect the observational and self-report instruments of pizza fondness to show strong convergence. We would expect a very small to zero association between cat fondness and pizza fondness, both measured using self-report. A small association is possible because some people tend to give socially desirable or generally positive answers to questionnaires. The same zero to very small association can also be expected between cat and pizza fondness measured by observation. Finally, we would expect no association between different constructs measured with different methods. If the relations show all the expected patterns, then we have indirectly supported the construct validity of these four instruments. Of course, this is a laborious process because a lack of convergent or discriminant validity could be due to any of the instruments. This would require a new study that combines the instruments with others in new ways to find out where the problem exactly lies. 
hopefully you can appreciate how challenging it is to assess the construct validity of social and psychological constructs.